All right, so certainly we want to be good stewards. We want programs that our kids can get involved and be engaged. And, and we know that kids that are engaged are the best learners. And that's, that's the key component. And then finally, fourth, whatever a bond is proposed, we've got to get community support. And part of this committee's job is to really help get behind and support that. So that's our ultimate goal tonight. And that's where we want to get to. Um, and I am proud of the work that you guys have done. Second thing I want to do is I want to start off with a reminder, okay? In 2016, these were the projects that if everything had worked out right, we'd had our dedication Sunday, right, that we had to cancel, which by the way is now this Sunday, okay, at two o'clock. And all of you are invited, we'd really love for you to come. But we feel like we're at a point where we can celebrate all the Bond 2016 projects. It's part of the new Cleburne High School and the remodel, and again, you're sitting in the old library. That's where you're sitting tonight. So that gives you a real concept, I hope, is an idea of what a remodel can look like, because I don't see this being the library. You guys are back in the conference room, you know, of the old library. So a remodel can really shape and reshape what you see and how a space is utilized. We renovated all of the old high school as part of the CTE program. Y'all have had a chance to see that. You are experiencing the technology upgrades, for sure. Uh, and it's nice to know it was co-voice and not the Wi-Fi. I was not very happy uh, with that statement coming out uh, last time we met. We did a Cook remodel and a Co Coleman remodel. And all that for the bond of 2016, it was for $130 million, okay? We have over 600,000 square feet here at the high school. So we more than doubled the learning space from that bond. We now have a high school that can, can host up to 2,500 students. So we built it certainly with the future in mind, a growth in capacity, okay? So for the May 2021 bond, that group in 2016, raise your hand if you were on that committee, Raise an eye, be proud. You guys did great work. I, I mean, great work. That group, at that time, suggested that we come back and we look at, okay, technology upgrades in the future. Now, remember, this was what year? 2000. In 2016. Now, look, at okay, where are we at with technology? At that time, the decision was, we need to look for new land, for growth, and to purchase. And at that time, looking at wheat, is it going to be something we would consider as needing a remodel? Is it going to be time for a new Coleman? Is it going to be time for a new Cook? And then what kinds of upgrades to Girard? Now remember, for those of you on the committee in 2016, when we did the remodels of Cook and Coleman, do any of you on the committee remember how long we said that might last? What was our goal? What was our target? Before we even started. crickets. Ten years. We said we think the remodels and the things we're going to do really should last us ten years. But that committee still suggested, hey, let's put that as something we're going to talk about in five years. What's really changed, what's different, is down here at the bottom. Because one of the things that we did before we started the FAC committee was talk about an academic alignment process what it could do for our community to have all of our kids coming together in fifth grade. What would it do for our performance? And we had some data that showed way back when we were doing some testing, kids were doing better when we had a similar type model. It would give us an alignment piece where our kids would come together in fifth grade, would be together through graduation, okay? We did say it would increase one transition but one of the things we didn't have in 2016 is we weren't doing full day pre-K. We didn't even have pre-K at every building in 2016. So that is all a part of the process that we talked about of looking at ways we can create capacity at the elementaries. Looking at ways we could get vertical alignment. Okay? So, back in 2016, there were some ideas that we still might want to talk about technology by 2025 for another bond group. 
At that point in 2016, that group said, really, we don't want to think about the stadium until maybe 10 years. Okay? Potential new middle school was, be, was something that the 2016 group said it might be time to start talking about in 2025. Okay? And part of the potential expansion of the high school. What's our growth rate? Now, all of this is old information, but I think it's pertinent. We've gone through it earlier, but I feel like it's a really good starting point as we transition uh, tonight. Dr. Jackson put together a great survey, and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking it. It's very important. And I'm going to let him go through the details of the survey, and then we're going to come back, and, and I'll give you some additional information, and then we're going to probably have some time for discussion. All right, Dr. Jackson. Thank you, Dr. Heath. Um, so uh, thank you very much. First of all, I'd just like to say uh, thank you very much. We had a great response rate from uh, the committee on the survey that we sent out. And uh, uh, we sent it out to, uh, uh, to 24 of our members. We got 21 of you uh, responded back to you. Uh, for, if you're one of the three, you might want to check your junk mail or something. <laughs> I, we tried to send out some reminders. I was, I don't know if, if we got all of those, you, you know, you had a chance to open up that survey, but we did get 21 of the 24 uh, responses back from our FAC members. And we felt like Dr. Heath said, we felt like this, this survey was necessary, uh, especially after sort of the unplanned and we, uh, it, you know, failure of the, uh, the COVOI system that we were planning to use at our last meeting. Uh, that would have helped us build and, and measure that consensus a little bit more. So I know that, and just as a, just watching the last meeting, I know and I, I recognized that as we were leaving, there was sort of a, a we didn't really, like, like he, uh, Dr. Heath used the word clarity. I didn't feel like we had a, a, a clarity that we did truly reach a consensus based uh, for, on the recommendation that we ultimately landed on at the last meeting. So after some discussion, we felt like this, this survey was necessary to get some additional feedback, to give it to this committee uh, uh, on the, uh, on the, on the, the I'll call it the tentative recommendation that was made uh, at the last meeting. So we, we started out the survey by asking this question right here. So what was your level of support of the recommendation made by the FAC uh, at the uh, December 16th, 2020 meeting. And this is kind of what we expected based on what we sort of felt in the room, uh, just sort of, we didn't really feel, be, you know, and a lot of that was due to the technical issues that we had, that we had not grasped a, a, a true consensus around uh, the decisions that we made. And so, um, there was one response that said that I strongly agree with the recommendation that was made. Nine people responded, uh, 45%, uh, that I have some rec reservations about what was recommended, but I can support the recommendation, the ultimate recommendation that was made out of the December 16th meeting. Uh, six of you uh, said that I'm neutral or I, that I'm undecided on the, on the recommendation, and four uh, responded that that you have strong reservations and you cannot support the recommendation that uh, came out of the last meeting. So if you look at this, you see that 10, 10, 10 out of the, tw uh, or about half of the committee said, you know, indicated that you're either neutral, undecided, or that you cannot support the recommendation. And, uh, and as, as we sort of expected, that sort of bothered us a little bit looking at what was recommended and we need we felt like we needed to share these results back with the committee to help give you some additional clarity on on maybe what discussions need to occur next particularly if you look at these the the I'm gonna you know the the, the ten responses or about half the committee that says that you're neutral undecided uh, or you have strong recommendations and cannot support what was recommended out of the last meeting eight of those ten responses um, indicated that they wanted to see no action on the athletic stadium. Uh, we're going to dig into that here in just a minute, and, and that'll be sort of the last part of our, our discussion. But I want to go through, and, and 
but I want to just say that there were a lot of things that everyone did agree on or had a very strong consensus on. So let's start with the things that, that, that we do, that, uh, that we did have a lot of common ground uh, and built a very strong consensus on. Uh, the, we're going to go through the projects that, that were uh, discussed at the last meeting. And on the survey, if, if you remember when, when you took the survey, I asked what was your recommendation on the decision, whether you liked the, this op the option A, option B, or whether you recommended no action. And then there was a follow-up question to how strong is your opinion on that? So, you know, it, what, do you feel like this is the absolute right decision? Or do you feel like th this is your strong recommendation, but I'm open to some compromise? Uh, or is your choice like, you know, in the end, I could really live with either one. And, and this is sort of a great exercise to do if, uh, I'm a, kind of a great example to use with this is, is if you and your spouse are ever discussing where to go, to, uh, where to go for dinner, and, and your spouse may say something like this, hey, honey, where would you like to go to dinner, to dinner tonight? And you say, I don't know, uh, chili sounds great. And then, chili's really, why would you want to go to, you know, and so, so you can kind of see... And then all of a sudden, your, your strength of opinion got really small. And believe me, it's like I'm open to compromise. And so uh, this is kind of a, you, you think about that, you kind of think about it in those terms that, you know, you, you ask an opinion, you know, what, your, what is your recommendation and then how strong is your opinion on that recommendation? So, uh, and that sort of helps maybe give us a little bit uh, greater clarity in the, in the recommendations uh, that were that, that that did come out of the survey. So uh, on each project, I asked uh, each one of you to give a priority ranking uh, of one, two, or three, and that's the same scale that we've been using in our discussions. So uh, so for each project, you indicated it is a high priority, and it got assigned a value of one. Uh, if it was a medium priority, it got us, uh, assigned a value of two, and low priority a value of three. When I took the, the averages, the average priority uh, rankings of, uh, of all the projects, everyone that took the survey agreed that wheat was a 1.0. There was not one single response that said that it was a 2 or a 3. So its average score was a 1, which brought it to the top of the priority list. Okay, there we go. My, my apologies. Um, all right, so there we go. The, the data did not change significantly, but there was, after factoring in uh, a, a couple of late surveys that we, that we got in, uh, I, these, it did slightly change the numbers, and I, I quickly realized it on that last slide, wait a minute, just, some of those numbers were just a little off. Uh, but from what I just presented, these, these numbers are, the, the rank order is still the same. That did not change, just some of the decimals on the averages changed just a little bit. Uh, so still, wheat at a 1.0 at the very top, and then you you get down to uh, the the district net, network services at 1.5, um, the performing arts center that's a little bit closer to two, and then below two is the act, the student activity center, the multi-purpose indoor facility, and then the athletic stadium uh, was came in uh, on the priority average at 2.57. So. That is a great visual to help you sort of keep in your mind what the committee feels from top to bottom is the, the highest priority, ranking it to the lowest priority on things that, that we should consider as part of the, uh, the, the bond proposal. Now, let's go through each of the projects. And this is, the, this is one that we had, everyone said this is a priority one. No one disagreed with the fact that it is a, anything less than a priority one. And so the 13 of the, of the survey responses came back that option A, renovation, was the choice. And, and if you kind of get down into it, remember I asked you, you know, uh, in the survey, what is your strength of opinion? So if you said option A, but I'm really content with either option, that kind of is in that, sh four people indicated that, and that was sort of in that light blue. And in this darker blue, four people said, I feel like this is the absolute right decision. This is, I have a very strong 
strength of opinion in my recommendation for option A. So I just wanted to just kind of go over to sort of interpret what the, the different shades of the color mean. It sort of helps you sort of visualize what the strength of opinion is for the people that selected option A as, uh, as their recommendation. Uh, for option B, there were eight survey results that said rebuilding uh, wheat was, the, was, the, uh, was their right recommendation. And then no one said on the survey that uh, no action was recommended. So everyone, so I think that this is a good, even though there's uh, a little bit of debate to be had between option A and option B here, everyone says it's a, it's a priority one and everyone agrees that something has to be done about wheat. I think that that is a, a, a point that everyone can, can come together and say this is a strong, uh, we have a strong consensus about this particular project on putting it on, on a bond proposal. Uh, on the Smith middle, and I'm going to you know, use quote intermediate uh, with the great alignment, option A was the, uh, was the, the highest uh, recommendation. Uh, at 13, uh, 13 people saying that this is their preference. Eight of those 13 says, I feel absolutely that this is the absolute right decision. Uh, option B, uh, seven people said that that was their choice and one person recommended no, no action on, on the Smith uh, uh, intermediate proposal. Uh, on the Don Smith Performing Arts Center, three people recommended no action. Of those three, uh, you know, two were saying this is a strong recommendation, and one said that this I feel that this is absolutely the right decision. Uh, option A, we had seven uh, members, committee members, recommend option A. Uh, we had ten recommend option B, and one recommended just an H back only. Option C as as uh, work that needed to be done to the to the PAC. On the student activity center at the top was no action. Um, eight people recommended no action. You have seven people that recommended option A. Two people, oh, sorry, three people option B and uh, sorry, three people option B and three people with option C. And again, you can look at those and you can see just the varying strength of opinion that, that they chose for that recommendation. And on the athletic stadium, now this is where I said that when going back to the first question, do you feel like you can support this recommendation? Uh, on the athletic stadium, we had 15 people recommend no action and there was a, there was a, a, a pretty strong uh, correlation between the, 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 the people on the first question that, that said, you know, can you support this? And, and if you, and the, those uh, members that answered uh, undecided or neutral or that I cannot support this recommendation, there was a strong correlation between that and then recommending no action on the athletic stadium. So I feel like maybe there needs to be some discussion on whether this was the correct decision possibly. Uh, it, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm just interpreting the data. I'm not you know, saying my personal opinion, I'm just interpreting the, the data from the survey. I think this was a point of discussion from the survey that pointed out that, that this could have been uh, sort of not, not having good clarity at the last meeting on whether this particular point needed to be on the, on the proposal. Uh, and then five people did recommend, but the, the, uh, of the five people that, that recommended the, the stadium to be on the proposal, three had a sort of, a, they, you know, that they're content with, with either option being on the proposal. On the technology projects, there was, there was a broad base of support, as we noticed in the priority rankings. Uh, the, there was a broad base of support for the technology projects. Um, particularly the safety and security were 18 respondents uh, said that this was the absolute right decision. 15 felt this was, uh, you know, very strong on the, uh, on the instructional technology uh, and to somewhat of a lesser degree, but still strong support for the district network services as well. But that was a little bit lower on the priority rankings compared to the other two technology issues. 
So going back to our priority, uh, from what you responded on the survey on your priority scores, uh, if I were just to, just to simply just do some simple rounding based on these and, and, and just say, okay, what is the consensus of the priority rankings from the committee? The first score would definitely, if you just rounded it, it would be a priority one. So you have, everyone agrees that WEED is a priority one, the safety and security, the instructional technology items, and then the Smith Middle School Intermediate um, renovation. Those all came to an average of a priority of one. In that two range, you have the network services, the performing arts center, and the, uh, and the student activity center at the high school. And then priority three, uh, the, the athletic stadium. So, I, uh, I think it's great to, to stop and to look at those survey results. It, I, I believe it helps guide us with some clarity. Um, on the uh, on on the recommendation that was that came out of the last meeting, and so I'm now going to turn it over to Dr. Heath, and any any discussion or comments. Um, I want to kind of go back to where we initially started. This slide looks pretty similar to the one that I showed you that the 2016 bond committee did. But I want, to, I want you to point out that there's clear differences. You know, we're not just making a decision that's a huge decision for today. But everything that you do has an alignment piece that impacts the future of this community as well. And I think the 2016 bond group did a great job of projecting what they felt like were essential needs, things that this district needed to do, and to try to provide us a roadmap and to provide the board in 2021 a good place to start with and a direction to go. And then and even a 10-year plan for 2025. So remember the committee, when we say bond 2016, that committee met in 2015. That committee made a recommendation to our board in January of 2016. And then the board heard that recommendation, asked questions, did what they wanted to do, and then they had to decide as a board if they wanted to call for the bond, okay? And we've given you a timeline on the back of your sheets for every meeting, giving you deadlines and timelines and calendar dates, et cetera. So <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to show by this slide is that this group, we need more than just a 2021 20, recommendation because you're the most knowledgeable people in the community about all the things that we've been talking about and presenting. We haven't tried to shape your thoughts, but just present the information to you. And we felt like tonight we could come back and take the feedback you've given us and really try to present it to you in, in what may make some sense, or it may not, and that's what I want to hear. But for a 2021 bond, the five things that <clears throat> are checked up here were basically, except for the district-wide technology, if you go back to this slide, we're all 1.0s. And there, that's clear consensus that those are needs now, okay? We've had some great discussion as a group and individually and at our tables about trying to establish what you really feel like are priorities. And so one ideology might be that anything that <clears throat> mathematically would be a two, those things might be something that future bond groups could look at and future boards, okay? The third one is down there at the athletic stadiums listed as a three. So, the reason this was a check is because Chris updated the data and that slide didn't get changed. So that would have actually been a question mark at this point. So if this bond committee so desires as a group to collectively say it looks like the things that as a collective group that you're most focused on are these top five. One, two, three, four, 
my, I'm sorry, top four. With this one being a question mark, the Don Smith Auditorium being an, a question mark at this point, and the stadium being a question mark, okay? If you shift over to column two, then those things that were really question marks are things to consider for the future in five years that could become a part of 2025 and so forth for a 10-year project. Now, we presented to you at the very last what a capacity was for this bond. And it was $90 million. It was $90 million is the capacity. That hasn't changed. It's not a moving target. It's not a target that the board gets to adjust. It's, that is the capacity for a no tax rate increase bond. Okay? It's $90 million. Some great discussion about do we have to spend all 90 If we don't spend 90 does it create capacity down the road? The answer is... Sure, the capacity will change annually as the valuation of our property and our communities change. Sarah did a great job of presenting that in reality, it's been about how much, Sarah, per year in growth valuation? 10%, which would equal about $10 million annually. Now, I'm not a mathematician, and I certainly am not a futurist. I want both those things on record. Is that on the tape? I'm not a mathematician and I'm not a futurist. Nobody can predict the economy, okay? But you can figure in five years, there's 50 million additional capacity if you use my simple math. Of whatever then is still not added into capacity. And again, those are estimates. We really won't know anything until this committee makes a recommendation until our board decides they want to go for a bond, what that bond would look like, and then most importantly, the voters approve it. And then even after it's approved, the bonds have to be sold. Then we get a better picture, okay? But I want to remind everybody of those things. All right, this has been in your notebook every week. We've talked about it. And we've talked about what our ideas were to get to consensus. We put up an idea that says the top four certainly are things that we feel very clearly equal that one. 1.0. 1 Rounded. Doing math. The three things below were at 2.0. Okay? Based upon the survey results, and the athletic stadium was a three. Now, I want to give you about two minutes because you guys are not at your normal tables. And I also want to respect each other, and I want you guys to talk to each other. Okay? Pair and share. Talk to each other. Talk about what you've seen presented, what's been discussed. And then after that three minutes, we'll come together and say, hey, questions, thoughts from different groups. Okay? Everybody that's in here is a stakeholder. This is important. Everybody that in here, that's in here is a stakeholder. And your input is valuable. Three minutes. Begin. Okay. It's three minutes. Um, and I want everyone to hear what Mr. Archer said. This is the spreadsheet that originally that's in your folder. And I think most of you probably have a calculator, but just for chagrins and for everyone's uh, sake and information, I'm going to ask Rick to go in and say, okay, did yes to the things that it appeared based on the survey, okay, uh, of those four. So athletic option C was, was not on there. You can scroll all the way up if you want, Rick. Okay, just to, just to show you, we're not skipping anything that's at the top. It's a value, okay, the PAC, the PAC, and the PAC were listed by consensus as two, okay, not ones, not priority ones. As we go on down, the athletic improvements for A, which is the student activity center, okay, are the athletic improvements that were listed. So just to make sure there's no confusion, this is the student activity center that's listed on this sheet. 
it's the indoor student activity center is listed on this sheet as athletic improvements options A, B, and C. And based upon the survey, that also ranks a two. Okay, so we're going to scroll on down. Stop. At Smith Middle School, clearly everyone was interested in doing something at Smith. It was very clear. Okay, if you take a majority of the feedback that Chris presented, then it was option A. So just for chagrins, mark option A. Option A was the 5.8 million. It was the more extensive Smith remodel. Okay, scroll on down. We had everyone say yes to wheat as a 1.0. And there was some real division, but everyone agrees something needs to be done, but the question was what? And at the last committee meeting, <clears throat> we had to go back and forth. The survey indicated, okay, by survey, these are not my, I'm not repeating what, what Dr. Heath wants. Trying to give back information in consumable bites was that the wheat remodel at 46 million was preferred of all the yeses, okay? Scroll on down, Rick. Safety and security made a one, one option. <laughs> it's, it's got Instructional bad. technology was at a one. Classroom teacher laptops, career technical education labs were yes. And district-wide services were one point, what was it, 1.8, 1. 1. 1.6? It rounded up. Okay, so it would be a no. So the total for that bond right there is 58 million. Okay? The total for that bond is 58 million. If we leave everything exactly the same, but you want to add in the district-wide services, then you click it as a yes, and you scroll down, because that would be the next highest ranking ordered list. You scroll down, and you would have a bond at 59,749,850. That district-wide technology was about a million, million two, is what that total was, okay? If you take the next highest, what's the next highest on the list? PAC. PAC. And there was some real dissension on that, but it was the next highest, okay? People wanted to do things, and I have said very clearly through this process, if the bond committee doesn't do anything, Okay, we're going to go in and fix, fix the HVAC system as a district because the kids have been out of that facility for two years, two plus years. Now I have a teacher who is so thankful for her black box theater. She actually is doing flips all the time. She loves it. But she also wants to get the kids on the big stage. I'm just being honest with you. So it's a little bit bittersweet for her. She does an amazing job. I don't know how many of you got to come up and see the the musical that they performed, The Adams Family, in theater in the round. They did a phenomenal job, okay? So let's hold off on the pack. We'll show all that. Let's scroll back down. Go to wheat. Because we had 100% wheat, change this one to a, to a no and make option B, which is a total green bill. That's a total green bill. Lots of good discussion in here about that, pros and cons from you all's committee. Certainly people that are in the school business that have just lived through a remodel part realize there's transitional issues. We do know that green bills kind of help eliminate that, for sure. But it is 22 million more. So if we put yes there, scroll down, to the 68 million to total green build, which by the way, remember one of our four cores is the community has to what? Has to support it. At the end of the day, we want a bond proposal presented to our community that they can understand and that we want their support. They see us as being good stewards, that we're putting students first, and that the facilities are going to assist our students and our teachers. So just scroll down, Rick, what's the total? 
Oh, it's 82. Okay. So we added in the district technology and we changed wheat to a green bill. All right. Do you all want a few more minutes at your table to discuss what's up here? Okay. I'm going to ask everybody to come back together. One of the things really important is, is we give everybody at the table an opportunity uh, to ask questions because a question that one table have may be the same question another table has and so forth. And so just by proximity, I'll start at this table. Any question? Yeah, part of, the, part of the new build for wheat being built behind the uh, existing wheat is that middle schools need space. They do, they do need facility space. They need field space uh, for outdoor activities. Uh, so doing that and trying to repurpose wheat as something else uh, would be extremely difficult and more importantly, make the new wheat be very limited. And there's not enough shared facilities between the high school and we to say, oh, we've got enough facilities to take care of all those athletic needs, all the band needs, all those things, and leave both buildings there. That was my reply. Um, one of the things that I've already mentioned is in the PAC, we have to do the HVAC. The bond committee doesn't, but we really need to do the HVAC. Uh, one of the great points made in this committee was by Brad because at some point we were unsure about the roof, but we got very good clarity that the roof is in good shape. It's 10 years old. It's good till the next major hell storm. And if we have one of those, we do have insurance. And that's how the insurance come into play, which was another question somebody had asked, which was good. The roof's in good shape. The HVAC system, not so much. It's been through bail and wire, okay? The auditorium itself from the front looks new. That was brought up in here. But the insides are the same. Okay? The insides of the PAC are the same. The seats are not that old. Okay? The seats themselves are not that old. But the carpet is in pretty rough shape. It needs to be replaced. Doesn't mean it has to be a part of a bond. And a real sticking point on the PAC for this group was talking about which of really these two options made the most sense. And part of that was this being theatrical light, sound, HVAC, and minor finishes. Didn't talk about doing major finishes. Okay, this came into the restroom issue. Saying, okay, once we get into doing more than light finishes, it activates those codes that Shane Paste and the city are responsible for ensuring that the things that we build are of quality and that, that it reaches that level, it should, triggers it. So then the whole facility has to meet ADA. And I think the architects have tried to explain that. And so they want to be sure able to answer questions like, okay, it's a two-story auditorium. We have a small balcony. And if you have that space and you're going to do anything other than what's minor re uh, renovations, it has to be accessible to Americans with disabilities. The restrooms were a big, a big talking point, okay? But if we go in and do the restrooms, it also triggers ADA because that's no longer a minor renovation. Now, I'm saying all that based upon what the architects have communicated to us, based upon what code indicates has to occur. Okay? Not putting anybody under the spot with the city. Don't pick on Shane Pace. He's been a great, <laughs> a great asset on this committee. All right. Going down. Or go up, Rick. The athletic improvement. Stop. Okay. As we've talked about option A, B, and C, just for quick review. Option A puts on a new skin. It lays down a new carpet. Okay? That's really what option A does. But it's the existing size and location 
Not going anywhere. It's the existing size and location. Now, I will tell you in 2016, for those of you on the committee, and you guys can, can tell everybody in here, that indoor was a big topic. It was a big topic. It almost derailed this facility. That's the truth. Almost stopped the whole thing. Now, I don't understand that. I'm just repeating what I recall. Makes no sense to me. None. It's a great facility. We have kids that use it every single day. It served us well in the construction of this process. Okay, on the, east, on the west side, we've moved in a weight room that's going to be coming out. That could be used for storage, as is, for athletics, for field maintenance, okay, for band who needs some storage, as is, just the existing facility, not doing anything to it. It's been brought up, rightfully so, by this group, the ladies' locker room, just to the west of the Student Activity Center was a part of the bond, and we're going to deconstruct that. It's got to come down, okay? It needs to come down for student access because we have always intended for the students to be able to access the building from where? The parking lot, where the parking lot is out there, okay? That's got to come down. That's not really a part of a bond, all right? Option C is really taking the entire student activity center and moving it to where it becomes the most logical place on the campus. That it doesn't interfere with eventually either a stadium, okay? We talked about having a band plaza, having egress for our high school kids on option C. Option B is basically taking what you currently have doubling the size of it, leaving it where it's at, and you know where the girls' athletic building is. That's where it would all go. Okay? So it would block the student entrance to the school. Okay? And that's all been discussed. I mean, we, we wanted to give you all those options. All right, scroll on down to the stadium. The stadium here on the campus was estimated at a 5,500 seat aluminum stadium, which the majority of them are, okay, for just under 20 million. Now, I know everyone has tried to look at that, but if you look at how the surveys came back, that one was the lowest ranked and the most divisive, understood, because 2015 we talked about a stadium. In 2014, we've talked about a stadium. And I bet we're going to be talking about a stadium until it's a point we're not talking about a stadium. And I get it. I want you to know up front, and I've said this, we play five maximum varsity home football games at the Rock right now. That's what we play. The junior varsity football games and the freshman football games, they play here at the high school. Soccer, up to this point, has played all of its games by choice here at the high school. Because weather, it's a winter sport, and weather doesn't influence it because it's a turf field. Our board had looked at the rock. They've looked at it over and over again. It is a protected historical site. There is not going to be an answer for parking. It doesn't currently meet ADA, the stadium at the rock. There's no long-term solutions there. But we have learned that eventually we could, even though it would be very tight, have it here. And that's what that proposal looks like, okay? The other the parking numbers and the parking cost is dispersed throughout 
option A, B, or C of the athletic improvements because we free up spaces if we move the, uh, the um, activity center. It's a dual um, uh, purpose, I guess we could say. If we didn't do the stadium completely, maybe we could shave a little bit off of the parking numbers in those numbers. It's not a whole lot, though. It's also, it should be mentioned, that parking, you guys know a lot of stadiums, it's a freestanding stadium, so your size of the parking to handle all of that. You have a lot of parking already here that would save you on, on needing to provide more parking. But they also, they're also need is the arena, the basketball stadium. It, it requires a lot of parking too. So some of that initial and the, uh, and the improvement pieces were, were twofold. Help the stadium meet its capacity needs, but also to help relieve some of the issues with the existing basketball arena. There's only minimal amounts of parking within each one of those. As Todd said, most of the parking required for a stadium is already on this site. So we are very close to achieving the number of parking required for a 5,500 seat stadium with the parking that's on site now. So we've peppered a little bit in with each one of those options because we free up some spaces that we can add parking to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is really collectively where we were at. There were four projects that were clearly marked as ones. Okay, clearly. But we also want to be due diligent, Shane, to the fact that we've gone through a long journey. It's intentionally spread out so that we don't meet three times in a week. It really allows people time to reflect. And I'm going to tell you, Chris's example is great because when he said he wanted to go to Chili's, he already told me the rest of the story was is that his opinion, although important to eat dinner, he ended up having to go to Cotton Patch. Right? So he was willing to make a concession. But eating dinner was not a concession. Definitely they were going out to eat, and definitely they were going to eat somewhere. When he was asked, where do you want to go eat, and Chili's was thrown out, the person who asked the question really probably had already a little more affirmation about where they wanted to go. They were being polite type of deal. And your time is valuable. This is important. And I'm going to tell you honestly, you've got a great bond. You have done really good work if you go with those four priorities. It also simplifies one thing. It lets you down to making a decision at really, in my mind, based on what I've heard of those four on wheat, one choice, rebuild or remodel. And by far, remodel was the majority of the group's interest. Okay? And that's where we started the discussion. Based upon that information. And not to go back to the slide, but if you'll look at what you have in your handout, one thing that's a very true statement is the Performing Arts Center is important. The Student Activity Center is important. And a stadium is important. But timing is also important. Which means we couldn't do everything right now anyway. Just can't be done. So the decision is to do the best thing. And that's what you guys are struggling with. And that's what I love about the past. And that's good. But it has to be something this group's going to support and present to the board on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Brad has volunteered to be a spokesperson for that. And I'm appreciative. I would present it myself, but I can't. It has to come from you as a committee. Does that answer your question? Okay. So, to me, based upon going back, the one most important decision left on the table. And I understand that what it's doing is that decision's choosing other projects or not choosing other product, projects. That's part of the struggle. But to me, it's about making the best decision for your middle school, for your children. You believe in their interest. Hopefully, as a committee, you can see a remodel can turn out great. Because it can. 
And that's not chump change for a remodel, 46. It's also 40,000 square additional new footage. Is that correct? 40,000 or 60? 40, wasn't it? That was presented for that amount of money. It's 22 million more for new. Comments on that? I'm going to answer it directly because I'm not going to be on the spot. My personal opinion is that a 30 year old building is still a really good building. Okay? It's still a really good building. It's really hard to sell to a community that you're going to tear down a 30 year old building. When you have schools in this district that are older than 30 years of age, I'm just going to be honest. You ask my opinion, I'm going to tell it to you. Long term, a brand new school that meets all the 21st century needs is a great investment. It is a great investment at today's dollar, right? Not talking about interest rates or whatever, but a new middle school in 10 years is going to cost a lot more than a new middle school will today just because of escalation and cost. So, what is the need? What's the most important thing? Okay? Not my opinion of what I want, but what makes the most sense for where we're at. And for me, it's to remodel wheat. But 25 years from now, if that's the decision this committee would make, they're going to go, man, they had a chance to build a new one. That's the world, right? What makes sense today? What makes the most sense? What's the easier sell? That, that's probably an easier sell, and that's just my honesty. My preference, new. I like new homes, new builds, new codes, less unknowns, less disruptions. That's the straight answer. Okay, other questions? You know, my contract is up for, uh, <laughs> if you ask me, I will tell you, okay? Because I think that's a very fair question. I think leaving the indoor student activity center where it's at is a big mistake. Just tell you, I think it's a mistake. I think it still has functional life. If you choose to do that thing, you can spend a minimal amount, replace the carpet, and we use the facility to the best of its ability for however long, five years, 10 years. To spend money on it where it's currently located makes no sense to me. Because then it's there forever. And I will be honest that we had several proposals presented to the board in bond 2016 of trying to manipulate and figure it out. And even our board struggled with it being a good answer. So to spend money on it makes no sense to me to leave it there. Not because of the price tag. I'm talking about long term. Makes no sense. I'm talking about if you build a stadium on this site to leave it there makes no sense. I'm talking about student egress and access and parking that Blake keeps bringing up. It makes no sense to what? Leave it there. Scroll down. Smith, do you want me to talk about Smith? <laughs> Smith is a critical component as an intermediate school. And I don't think either one of these are bad. I really don't. I, think you, I don't think you go wrong. And I think doing the serving area and the cafeteria is essential to really make that campus flow. It's not a great design where the way it is now, you guys saw the sunken pits, the serving lines, and that stuff on the tour. That needs to be fixed. But if you spend a little bit more money, I think you can do more things. And so I don't think there's a bad answer there. I really don't. And I think as a group, you guys made a consensus really clearly on Smith. 
and a lot of people who are going to support this bond, guess where they live? But one thing's for sure, every child in this district now will go to Smith. And now every child in this district is going to go to Wheat Middle School. And that's going to be a very important part of this bond. Very important part. Scroll on down. The stadium, gosh, it is a wonderful, beautiful, historical site, but not very functional as a stadium. In my honesty, it's not as much about the price as it is about the timing. As much as I wish it was time right now, it's going to be a standalone proposition. And right now, I don't know there's enough momentum out there that the timing with COVID sends the right message to the community for stadium today. But that doesn't mean in five years it's not the right time. And in fact, in 2016, they said that would be probably the right time in 10 years. Because as a group, you've, you've dealt with your high school, your middle school, and your intermediate school. You have an alignment 5 through 12 vertically. We've created some capacity in the elementary schools, and the district board has already bought property. So we don't have to add it to a bond program down the road. Okay? Um, which one did I leave out? Technology. Performing Arts Center. I personally think if you're going to do anything in the PAC, you do it right. And you do it once. And you don't put a Band-Aid or lipstick on it and say, we're going to kind of come back and talk about it in five years. Personally. I never believe that's what you do with taxpayer money. Ever. You value it. You do it right. And there in turn, they say they're good stewards. They're going to do what they said they were going to do. The, the community will deliver on the product. That being said, my heart bleeds for the theater arts teacher. <laughs> it does. She's got a great program. Those kids have been displaced, truthfully, for two years. That means last year's seniors did not have an auditorium in theater arts for two years. I'm putting it in kids' terms. And it would take another year to go in and do major renovations. But to be honest with you, if you ask me my opinion, they need to be done. But you do it right. And that's why I don't think it's a bad project to wait for what? Five years. Let's the kids get back in it. Let's let them tell us what their needs really are. It's very important. And it's very functional as long as we fix what? The HVAC. I'm not going in it without the HVAC, just saying, okay? But in all seriousness, timing, this may not be the best time, my opinion, whatever it's worth. What have I left out? Technology, student technology and instructional technology, I'm a huge supporter of it. We wouldn't be where we're at today without 2016 support, not even close. Huge supporter. We have purchased every child a brand new Chromebook this year. We've met the expectations of the bond of 2016. We exceeded it. We said one device for every child, eighth grade through 12th. We're pre-K through what? 12. We've replaced the devices. So, I, but I, I do believe it's part of an ongoing growth. If you were to ask me on technology about the district-wide technology, and I think there's some of you may feel this way, that's our responsibility. We can take care of that. We'd like for you to take care of it, but we can take care of that. It's our responsibility. I also have told you, honestly, it may be another standalone what? Proposition. Could. Not the instructional, not the safety, but the district-wide technology. It could. Bond Council could come back and say, its own proposition. Okay. So, I'm okay not doing that right now. And it can be maintained. Mike just threw me daggers. 
but that's the whole bond for me, okay? Other questions? I don't want to be the person who shapes the bond. It's not my job. My job is to help you all make the decision and a recommendation to the board. And you all have done great work. So, last time, based on the very last statement, we have yes, scroll up, Rick. And based on what you've said, yes is right there. Yes on safety and security. Yes on instructional technology. No on district-wide services. I'm just saying back, back to where we originally were at the very beginning, okay? Do what? PAC still on there? Make that a no. Rick, is that correct of where we started? No, you did not. It was not the top four. So if this is where you start, the best decision for we is the most important decision that this committee can get behind and, and, and sell. And I'm trying to help the board, too, here. Because the committee, we need your support. There's not a wrong answer. I love it when I get told that from my teachers. There's really not a wrong answer. There's not. So is there anyone in here, honestly, that, that just can't live with this? I want to hear it. Anyone? Is there anyone in here who thinks this isn't the best top four decision? There could be the best of the best of the best. Anybody? Is there anybody in here who thinks there's something that we didn't put on here that needs to be a one? Right now, needs to be a one. Yes. Rest of the technology. Anybody else agree or disagree? Yes. Okay, let's, let's handle one thing first. Let's, let's, okay, because first one, anybody in here disagree about the district-wide technology? That is correct what I said. Anybody completely disagree with adding it? Adamantly disagree with adding it. Adamantly. I mean adamantly. Put it on. All right, I already heard somebody wanted to talk about the PAC. Absolutely. Other comments? Yes. It is a full remodel. 
with the caveat of anything left out, architect, so I didn't lie. Okay, so, so it does the acoustics. I mean, that's another piece. The like ADA issues, everything. That option B for the 8.5 will bring it up to make it state of the art. State of the art. Okay. Within the existing shelf. That's right. Other comments? Yes. Mainly because we don't want to cherry pick these projects. We want you as a committee to have choices. And for y'all to tell us, present the information. You guys are community people. What do you want to do? There may not be a wrong answer, okay? But there could be better answers. But you have to decide that for yourself. I am afraid to answer that question, but I am going to tell you they're going to lose a year. I'm going to give you my honest, non-architectural answer. Okay? Doesn't mean they may lose, if the bond was to pass in May, doesn't mean they would lose it, have to for the following year. May be able to get it and use it, right? Replace the, the system, and then come back, start it the next summer with the plan, and then probably lose it that year. That's my guess. You guys on a major renovation. The only other option that we might have as we look at phasing is we don't lose the stage. We don't lose the, the, um, the being able to use it for practicing. We would lose it as far as a major performance in, you, in the house seating. But we could get some things done. You could still use the stage, and the students could use it for practicing on the stage. But they wouldn't be doing their performances on that stage. <laughs> no. no. That's because that whole area will be full of scaffolding. All yep. where those seats are, that will be scaffolding to take that whole ceiling down and to redo everything. And okay. it, will, it will take time. Absolutely. Other questions? Comments? Okay. I know this, and I, I don't want to get into the vote and the frustration of trying to create a consensus. And I've tried to tell you that if you came to, to the board with a proposal for the top four, that's good work. And it doesn't mean it's gone forever, right? It doesn't mean that. Um, it does mean that you've got a roadmap. There was a capacity. It all comes back to how much money you could spend and you were at your capacity, and there was not more room to add the inside of the PAC. Okay? And if you recall, we had talked about increasing the size of the fly loft. And I talked to you all as a committee about that. And then when we got the structural and engineer's report back, they said, oh, no, 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 no. You can't just add footage to that puppy. It's got to come down past subgrade. So you got to demo it. That was never even part of the discussion. Okay, in the bond or anything else. And that information wasn't known until after the bond had already what? Passed and we we're doing engineers' reports. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the priority. And, and I think the most important priority up here is wheat. And, and it needs to be the first decision. Because you have said that's your first priority. Right? You've also indicated in the survey that a remodel of wheat is preferable. Anybody can't live with remodeling wheat. I need to hear it right now. Speak forever be silent. Okay, done. Next, Smith. Anybody disagree with the five million? We've already gone through that, right? Check, good. Safety, security, instructional, no need to revisit it. The next one really is then district-wide technology. That really is the next priority. Anybody not want it or anybody adamant about not wanting it? Okay, so if we're in there, we're at 63,679, and so I think the next priority, and correct me, Chris, if I was wrong, was... PAC. 
So you guys have hit it just right, right in order. And we've given you the option to do nothing. We've given you the option to do a minimal. We've given you an option to do what I call a middle to less than middle or to do it right. And we've had good discussion. And I do think that it's clear that what you wanted, what I'm hearing is option uh, B, if you're going to consider it. If you're going to consider it now, instead of five years from now as a committee, okay? That's what I'm hearing. Now, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody in the room. Now, I think you had a great bond before you got to the PAC as a committee. I do. So I want to be crystal clear. But as a group, the board's going to want to hear from this committee. Okay? So is there anybody who doesn't want to address the PAC in this bond? You'd rather do it in five years or ten years? Because we can. Is there anybody who favors C or A over option B? Okay. Scrolling back down to the, to the Student Activity Center, is that the next option, Chris? Yes. And really, I think at this point, the discussion is, and I've, is really long term. Is that true, what you guys talked about? Don kind of mentioned some of that, right? And so to me, the option is, is C, and if you did option C, long term, then you're at what? You're over. You guys have eliminated the stadium, you made it easy. Really. And that's okay. It should feel good. That's maybe something later on. So I think this is the last question before we move on. This is the last question tonight. Feedback. Student Activity Center. The indoor athletic improvement options. Would you like to buy it? It's got great steel in it. It has to go away. I think, I think what's marked up here is C, right? And C would put you a little over 90 million. So the question is, for, for, for the sake of argument, the question and now, and the only question left, now or in five years give the next committee something to look at? That's the real clarity here. The real clarity, okay? And because you're really on your sixth number two, right? You got your other number twos in there. So it's 90 million or it's, take it off, Rick, 68, is that right? And some change. And both are good. Everybody, anybody disagree with this right here? 68, 274, 249, and it's adamant that we need to add option C. Or option B. Or option A. Somebody has your hand up. So we've, we definitely could be right at 90 million with option C. No, if you do this, the building is moving. It's going to move it away from the high school building. No, it's a great question. I clearly want you to understand. It is moving it away. It puts you at your cap for sure. I understand. Anybody? Anybody? 
at the end of the day is, is if this is taken off, is anybody going to feel like you're missing something? Anybody feel like if it's taken off, the 22 million is taken off, and you come in with the 86 million, thank you, sorry, 80, 68. I said, <laughs> if you can recall, somebody play the tape back, I said, all right, I want everybody to stand up, because I think you've reached consensus with it off easily at this point. And you have a proposal to present. Take it off. For a total of $68,274,249 and stand up and give yourselves a round of applause. I'm serious. Stand up. Stretch. Get up. Okay. Can you go back to the PowerPoint real quick? You can stand up too. Stay, you can stay standing. Get some blood moving. If you need to go to the restrooms, they're there. I am really proud of you. I, I mean that. And I think this group did an awesome job, and it ain't easy. And we said day one, not every single person's going to get every single thing you want. That's part of living in a democracy, right? But there were no losers tonight. Okay, I'm going to ask the toughest question maybe that I've asked this group. I lived through the 2015 group, and I did say that that facility, unfortunately, really was a contentious speaking point. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. And I'm not asking you the question. It was contentious when you built it. Correct. So is that going to be an issue that creates divisiveness in selling it to the community is my question. I don't know. I'm asking it. Because the board would ask me that question. Is anybody adamantly opposed to putting it on the bond? besides Brad. So we have dissension, the, the 22 million. Sure. Any architects want to address that? You haven't said anything you'd want to say. Yeah. It's going, going. Okay. So when we look at the cost of a stadium, we're looking at the cost of this stadium, we're talking a press box and bleachers. Most of the parking is already on site with the high school. As I said earlier, that's one of the big proportions of a stadium. The track, the field, and all the other utilities that go to a stadium, they're already on site. So we're paying for a press box, and then we're paying for bleachers only. And we're only paying for 5500 If you look at comparisons for other stadiums across the state, a lot of times you're at 8, 10, and 12. So we have, the, we have the building itself, the indoor practice facility, larger. We have two practice fields or one? One practice field, a little bit of additional parking and paving when we take that building out. We have areas where we can add parking and we can add a little bit of paving also that helps support whether there's a future stadium at that point or not. When you do see or not, you might as well fill that area in and it's a master plan concept. Then also the tennis courts. It does. It redoes and it, 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 it totally redoes and moves your tennis facility over to the wheat. Yes, it does. That's correct. So the tennis facility is also part of it. That's correct. Dr. Heath, one thing that hasn't been brought up as I've listened to the committee talk about the, both the PAC and the moving of the Student Activity Center are the, are the pieces of the community that those touch. Uh, if, you, if we don't do anything for athletics, then we have an entire group of people who may not be excited about the bond. If we do the work for the PAC, we have the fine arts uh, community who has something to be excited about on the bond too. So those are two considerations as well. Very experienced and well said uh, speak, you know, and in bonds, the more people that you have that are stakeholders that have a reason to go vote, it is important because a lot of times apathy can run the bond. I mean, people just think, hey, it's going to pass. Hey, it's a no-brainer. 
but the more cause they have to get to vote, that's well said. The more turnout you're going to see. Band does use it. Flag Corps will go in there. Cheerleaders. PE, dance. Football. And uh, what's the biking group that used to use it? I mean, it's community uses it. Little leagues, I know, get in and use it some. Rent. Yes, Rick? Wait, I mean, Todd, about, sorry. It's all good. I've been called worse. Oh, that's <laughs> not what I heard. Um, if you really think about it, the way it is now, it's half a field. And so that option C creates um, a full field, which means if you think you're using it now full time, with only half of the field, think about having a net that could drop down and having two groups going in at the same time. You could get double the use out of it throughout the day as well. Plus, by having it closer to the middle school, you also have the flexibility to use it for middle school students as well. No question. It is heavily utilized. I'm, I, there's no question. It's used every day, it's used by everybody, and it is a must have. It's a must have. I'm saying, Facility. We couldn't. We don't want to go without having it. That's not okay. All right. So I'm not trying to tell you how to think or what to do. And I'm very happy. But I was told I tried to sell it and move on too soon. And if you all are adamant that you want to add it, then you're right at your 90 million. I mean, that's what you're at. And I'm. I think that's what. I need to hear that that's what you want to do. Which is option C for the Student Activity Center. Is there anybody adamantly, adamantly, adamantly opposed to adding? Two, three, okay. All right, anybody adamant it needs to be on there? Anybody adamant it needs to be on there? Adamant. Adamant people. You don't have to say, or you can raise your hand if it's adamant. It has to be on there. You want it to be on there. Anybody? On? You're adamant. It wants, you want it on there. Anybody else? Adamant, adamant, adamant. Anybody else? It needs to be on there. Adamant, adamant. Tara. Anyone else? I'm trying to do it to where we don't have to call for a vote. Do y'all want me to call for a vote? Anybody not want to call for a vote? Okay, Paige. Um, everybody have a pen at your table and grab the very back page of something in your notebook and create a little piece of paper. If you're on, if you're a committee member, and you can put. Here's what I want. I, here's what you need to put. And we're going to count the number of ballots. Hey, the, the question is, yes, you want to add, yes, is what you have to put if you want to add it, and no, if you do not want it added. So the presentation will be at this Tuesday, next Tuesday's meeting from this committee. Okay, it will be made. And please, all of you, feel free to come. We want you to come. All right? It will not be voted on by the board at Tuesday's meeting. It's presented. The board may ask clarifying questions, or they may seek people on the committee that they need to ask or hear from. And they have that privilege. And I want you to know that. And then once the board does decide to call for a bond, there are some clear do's and don'ts. Okay, for district employees, whether you're on the committee or not on the committee. If you're a district employee, you're always a district employee. Okay, but you get to have an opinion up until the time the bond is actually called. And then don't ask me my opinion. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn it over. All right, everyone, um, can you hear me?
Perfect. I'm pretty loud naturally. So I'm Anna Chenier. I'm with PPK. Um, I am not an architect, however. My background is in public relations and marketing, and my entire job is helping to communicate school ball referendums. So um, in the interest of time, I'm probably not going to go through all the slides, but just for my benefit, how many of you were involved on the campaign side of the 2015 bond? On the PAC, helping to promote it? OK. So this is going to be a refresher for some of you. For those of you that are not, um, get some new information in here. So we'll kind of start. Um, basically, a good rule of thumb with bond referendums, if there truly is a need, the need has been properly evaluated and prioritized, worked into an effective solution that is sensitive to current economic conditions, and properly communicated, Texas school bond referendums do not fail. And that's the entire thing we've just kind of been going through over these weeks and weeks, is making sure that we are doing this. All right, your responsibility, if you're not registered already, please register to vote by April 1st for a May 1st election. Get informed, spread the word, and vote. So essentially, if and when the board calls an election, the school district can no longer, as Dr. Heath mentioned, uh, promote its own bond referendum. So they'll give you facts all day long um, and give you everything kind of straight, but you will never see anything say, vote for this, support this, vote yes, from the district side of things. That's why we have two campaigns. We have the district, which is the factual campaign, which is remember to vote. And then we have a political action committee or PAC, unlike the Performing Arts Center PAC, but persuade the remember to vote for. These are gonna run simultaneously during the campaign. They use a lot of the same kind of tools in terms of um, signage and brochures and web presence and social media, a lot of the same tools, but your messaging is going to be a little different. All right, I'm not gonna really go through this. Um, for time, but we basically have the district campaign, the PAC campaign. Um, we'll set up our PAC, have organized meetings, go through all of our strategy and messaging, and then produce our materials. But we'll go into that more later. All right, let's go over the rules. So Dr. Heath did say there are rules in place for district employees when a bond election is called by our board of trustees. So that is true. Um, I do have to agree with them a little bit because technically our board members and our district staff can absolutely promote a bond referendum as long as they are not doing so on district property, using district resources, or while wearing your Cleburne ISD hat, so to speak. So you are more than welcome after hours to join the committee um, on weekends to help put signs out, and we're going to need your support. So as a staff member, when you're acting as a staff member, how do you stay out of trouble? Um, you can basically do all these things on the left here, organize a committee to assess needs, that's what we're doing here tonight, uh, communicate the committee's efforts to the public, communicate the facts, only the facts, communicate with community organizations, all of that great stuff. Again, facts only when you are wearing your Cleburne ISD hat. You cannot advocate for the bond as I've described, use district resources for political advertising, spend or authorize spending for political advertising, use pay time for political advertising, or host PAC meetings on district-owned property. So we're never gonna see a PAC meeting here at the Bistro or at Wheat or anything like that. We're gonna have our meetings off district property. All right, so for the PAC, how do I stay out of trouble? It's pretty much the opposite. We can advocate for the bond. We can organize PAC meetings and support the bond proposal. We can raise funds for a pro-bond campaign. We can produce all kinds of vote yes, vote for signage. We can do all of that. We cannot distribute these materials on district property. We cannot distribute these materials without property owner's permission. We don't want to do that. Um, we cannot display signage in prohibited areas, display pro bond materials on private property, um, again, host meetings on district owned property, and then everything we do has to have a disclaimer, basically political advertising paid for by whatever our PAC name is. So uh, my entire job is to kind of help the district and the PAC figure out what we can and cannot do. We've got a tons of experience in this, but that's basically it. Um, really, the only person we probably recommend stay neutral the entire time would be Dr. Heath, because one could argue that 24-7 he is on call for the school district, but he's really the only other one. So any other employee and board member, as I said before, can absolutely join the PAC and help promote this bond as long as you're not doing so in the capacity of a Cleveland ISD employee. All right. One last thing, and he kind of touched on this too. Top five reasons school bond propositions do not pass. Bad economy, tax effect, lack of trust, they're uninformed. The number one killer of bond referendums is apathy. So we cannot risk our voters simply thinking that this will pass, you don't have to go vote. 
We're going to need to mobilize everyone that supports this bond proposal to make sure that it's a success. All right, y'all, that was fast on purpose. I'm a little out of breath, but is there any questions I can answer about the do's and the don'ts, about what's next? Y'all are a lively group. <laughs> I know it's late, and I know you've been here a long time, and you did such a great work tonight, but okay. With that, Dr. Heath, right. thank you. Uh, student Activity Center, Option C. Okay, so clearly the eyes have it. All right, and we'll move forward with that. I want to give Michelle, do you have some things that you want to talk to yeah, everybody okay. about? Thank you. Okay, I asked you to stand up earlier. You guys have done a great job. I mean, um, everyone should leave tonight feeling like you made a difference for kids. Now, it's just the first step, and nothing matters if the bond doesn't pass. Um, nothing matters at the board doesn't call for a bond, you know, so those things are important. I want to thank you. I mean, it's never easy. It's not. And, but everybody tonight should feel good about the work you've done. And I hope you do. I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you've done.